handling, braking, acceleration, all depend on keeping the tires firmly planted on the ground. That's the job of the steering and suspension systems, and our topic for this edition of The Trainer. If you watched last month's video, you know the focus was on tires and how important they are in maintaining the overall handling and stability of the vehicle. And it's all done through a contact patch about the size of my hand. But even the best tires in the world aren't going to be able to do their job if the steering and suspension systems can't keep that contact patch in contact with the pavement under a variety of conditions and if the control inputs that the driver is making through the steering wheel don't get to the tires where they need to go. So in this edition of the trainer, we're gonna talk about inspecting the steering and suspension systems to make sure they're doing what they're supposed to be doing so the tires can do what they're supposed to do. Keep the vehicle under control, keep the occupants safe. The inspection process begins just as you come up to the vehicle to bring it into the shop with a quick visual inspection. We're gonna do a walk around and look at a few things of interest when it comes to looking at steering and suspension issues. Number one, what kind of condition are the tires in? Just a quick visual check as we're walking around the vehicle. And what about the ride height? Let's take a look at the ride height. Now, you can go formal with this, uh, get out your tape measure and so forth. But right now, I'm just looking at generalities, just trying to get a feel for the condition of the vehicle. And really, all I'm gonna do is take a look at the gap between the top of the tire and the fender on either side, just to give me a rough idea of what's going on. If one side is significantly different than the other, I know I got something I need to take a closer look at. We'll do the same for the back end. The one thing I'm not really going to be too worried about is the old balance test. Some of these, like this uh, 13 Ram pickup, are pretty tough to get bouncing. And besides, they're not going to tell me a whole lot about the, the low end of the suspension's uh, dampening characteristics. What I mean by that is the small ripples, those things that make a difference in the ride quality of the vehicle while we're cruising down the highway. Um, I can't really tell that by a balance test. The shock's completely blown, yeah, I'll be able to tell that all right, but I'll probably also be able to tell that by a visual inspection because it'll probably be coated in fluid. Now once I've got my quick walk around done, I'm gonna bring it into the shop for a closer inspection, but not directly. Maybe a little test ride just around the shop parking lot. Um, one of the things I want to do is get into small circles, lock to lock on the steering. I want to see how the steering feels. Uh, is it smooth through its entire range, going in both directions? Are there any abnormal noises? Um, maybe a few hard little stomps on the brake pedal so I can see how much dive there is in the suspension. Same on the acceleration. Maybe just a little blip on the throttle, see how much rise there is in the suspension. Is it more than I'm used to seeing on a particular model that I work on? Uh, if I have some bumps, speed bumps I can go over, so much the better. If you really want to do a good job with it, set up a little test drive area close to your shop that gives you a variety of conditions to operate the suspension and steering under. Uh, some corners, some uh, potholes, some speed bumps, whatever you can find so that your comparisons are on the same playing field with every vehicle you go and test drive. Okay, with the vehicle safely up in the air on our lift, we can move on to a closer inspection of the front end, the steering and suspension components. The first thing I'm gonna do is a quick tire inspection. I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail here because we covered that last month. You can always look that up either at the AutoPro Workshop, the Motor Age website, or our YouTube channel, of course. Uh, but I do wanna reiterate here the type of wear that you see on the tires. If you see a sawtooth wear with the treads looking like this in either side, that usually indicates a problem with the toe angle. What's the toe angle, you might ask? If you look straight down from the top of the vehicle, uh, just like looking straight down at your feet, and if your feet are pointed pigeon-toed in or toed out, that's the same thing with the tires. So the tires are pigeon too far in, that's toe in, and if it's too far out, it's called toe out. So either one of those, if it's outside of specification, can cause that kind of wear on the tire. Uh, another thing I want to look for is uh, abnormal wear on either side. Maybe the left side or the uh, right side, the inner or outer, is wearing faster than the other. That could indicate a problem with the camber angle. What's camber? If you're looking straight ahead at the vehicle, the tire should point almost vertical. They are uh, designed to turn a little bit in or out. Again, camber in or camber out. 
uh, and that's uh, what you're looking at there. Too much, of course, would accelerate the wear on one side of that contact patch that we talked about last month and cause some issues there. Um, general choppiness in the tire, uh, rough wear, could indicate a problem with loose suspension components or uh, suspension parts that are worn. Uh, certainly the uh, shocks uh, could be worn, allowing that contact patch to not stay in contact with the ground. Um, and of course you can't align a loose front end. So we want to make sure that all the parts are in good shape and tight before we even talk to the customer about doing an alignment on the car. Now, once I've done that, uh, we talked about shaking the tire in uh, other videos. Here I'm going to focus at the uh, nine and three o'clock position. And I'm looking primarily for play in the tie rod, the, uh, the steering uh, portion of the system. If I do feel any play, then what I like to do is reach behind and get a hold of that tie rod in while I wiggle the tire to see if I can tell whether it's the inner or outer that's causing the problem. Uh, once I've got that shake done, it's time to take it all the way up and do a visual on underneath. All right, there's a lot of things to look at up underneath the vehicle here. Right now in the frame, uh, center of the frame is the tie rod end. And primarily I wanna make sure that that boot there is in good condition. A lot of the components on modern vehicles now come without grease fittings, so they're relying on the grease charge that they had when new to, to uh, keep them healthy for a long, long time. If those boots deteriorate or they're torn, of course that uh, grease charge will be lost and then water can get in, corrosion can set in, uh, the part will very quickly wear out. Um, if it does have grease fittings, make sure that you grease them every time you have it in for an oil change. It's just part of the service. Uh, same thing here, looking at the lower ball joints and the upper ball joints. The boots are in good condition. We're also going to take a look at the stabilizer links to make sure their bushings are in good condition. They're not obviously broken, missing, as we come in on the sway bar itself and take a peek inside the second edition of those bushings. Are there any visual leaks underneath associated with the steering system? Of course, this struct is kind of interesting because it uses an electric steering system, as a lot uh, more cars and light trucks are doing. So you want any fluid leaks, but you still have the linkage to consider for wear and tear. Shocks, check those lower bushings and upper bushings for wear and tear. Take a good close look at the springs. Are they broken, sagging? Any problem with the boots on the steering rack assembly? And if they're torn, that means road debris, water, dirt, all that can get in there. And that's just not good for the system. Better to replace the boot than to replace a very expensive steering box. Of course, that suspension system inspection is not limited to the front. Shocks on the rear also need to be inspected. Look for any signs of leaks around the shock body, see if we can get in there. Now, a very light stain, that's normal. These are nice and clean. If it's running out though, that's a problem. Another thing you might want to consider with shocks is the age. Remember that uh, I mentioned earlier about handling the small bumps. Well, that's what it's doing all the time. In fact, I think the figures that I got from some manufacturers over 50,000 miles, that shock's oscillating almost 8 million times. Those little steel wafers in there that control dampening on those very small irregularities will wear out, break, uh, just not provide the ride quality that it did when it was new. So there's nothing wrong with wearing a shock based on age. Just double check the OEM service information for any recommendations they might have. Same here with the track bar now. And make sure those bushings are in good shape. This is what helps in that steering stability. Don't need any issues there. And we'll double check the other side. Check the springs and the condition of the joust bumpers. Front and rear. Before I go all the way down, I'm going to bring the vehicle just shy 
of the front tires in contact with of the uh, shop floor. Still got to check those ball joints. Okay, before I take the vehicle all the way down, I want to check the ball joints. Now, according to my friend Steve Cartwright, he's a garage guru with Federal Mogul, by the way, a common mistake that we make in the field is to not take the load off the ball joints before we test them. So in this case, even though I'm racked on the frame, I'm using a floor jack to underneath the lower control arm and then raising some of that vehicle weight on that lower control arm to unload the ball joints. Now I can check them for play. What I'm going to do now is just going to stick a pry bar under the tire and feel for any up and down play. If I do see something there or feel something there, I'm going to go behind, put part of my hand on the upper uh, control arm, the other part on the upper portion of the steering knuckle, and do that again to see if I can feel that motion between those two components that would indicate the upper ball joint is the part that's at fault. If I don't see anything there, I'll move to the lower ball joint, do the same thing, see if the play exists there. Now ideally, you want to do it exactly the way the OEM tells you to. If I had any suspicion there was a problem with either joint, I'd have to go in and get a dial indicator, mount it per the OEM service procedure, and check exactly how much movement there is. On this particular Ram pickup, the spec is 20 thousandths of an inch max. Odds are, if you've been in this business for any length of time, you've seen more than one vehicle towed into your shop with a failed steering and suspension component that caused the tire to come completely out of alignment with the rest of the car. Odds are also pretty good that whoever ha that happened to ended up in a ditch as a result of that. Now we all know that we can't make consumers perform repairs that are needed on their car, but as professionals we can darn sure make sure that we check and inspect all the items that are safety related every time we have that car in our hands and advise their customers of what that vehicle needs. That's our part in keeping the road safe for everyone. And with that little parting thought, I'll see you next month.